Can you spot a deep fake? I want to say this one's fake. I'm going to guess that this is real. The technology for deep fakes is getting better and better. And in this age of disinformation, that is a problem. Because if you're not able to spot them, how can you trust that what you're seeing is real? Welcome back to Technality. I'm Jacqueline Swan, and today we're going to see how good I am at spotting a fake. A deep fake, that is. Or as I like to call them, the catfish of the propaganda world. I like to think I'm a pretty aware person who won't fall for misinformation online. I'm fairly skeptical, and I like to double check sources on things that seem off. Of course, a lot of people feel that way and no one is immune to being tricked or else magicians would be out of a job. Now, if you don't know what a deepfake is, it's essentially someone replacing their likeness with someone else's with the intention to deceive. They've been used for satirical purposes, revenge porn, hoaxes, celebrity bullying, and to spread propaganda. And as AI and machine learning get better, so do deepfakes. Why are they an issue? Well, just look at the Russian invasion of Ukraine and how it's been used there. There's a video of Zelensky telling his troops to stand down and surrender. However, it's a deep fake. Now, videos like this become an issue because what if they believed it? Not only is it spreading propaganda in Russia to make them believe that they're winning the war, but it could also potentially spread misinformation among the troops in Ukraine. But deep fakes are a powerful tool in propaganda that we're starting to see more and more use of. And the technology to create one is becoming more and more accessible, which isn't good news necessarily if people aren't getting better at spotting them. So let's find out how to spot a deep fake and if I should be as confident as I think I am about being able to detect a fake. MIT's Media Lab has this site called Detect Fakes, which is a research project to see how good humans are at spotting fakes compared to robots. Essentially, they're trying to bring public awareness to how to spot a deep fake. MIT actually gives some points about what to look for. Number one, pay attention to the face. Now, most deepfakes are facial transformations. It's someone putting one person's face on top of another to get that person to look like they're saying something. Number two, pay attention to the cheeks and forehead. Does the skin appear too smooth or wrinkly? Does the age of the skin match the age of the hair? Oftentimes with deepfakes, things just don't line up. Number three, pay attention to the eyes and eyebrows. Oftentimes, defects have trouble rendering light properly, so you will see things off with the shadows on someone's face. Number four, pay attention to the glasses. Is there a glare? Is there too much glare? Does the angle of the glare move? Number five, Pay attention to the hair, or lack thereof, and the facial hair. Deepfakes often have a hard time representing hair, especially facial hair, so there might be a mustache or beard that looks off or just out of place. Number six, pay attention to moles. Does it look real? Number seven, pay attention to blinking. Are they blinking too much? Are they not blinking enough? Deepfakes have a hard time representing blinking. Number eight, pay attention to the size and color of the lips. Now that I know what I'm looking for, I'm going to take MIT's test and we're going to see how well I can spot a deep fake. Now the test was, can you identify deep fakes of Joe Biden and Donald Trump? Both of them are very public figures. Both of them I've seen and heard talk quite a bit online and on the news. So I like to think that I had a pretty good idea going into the test of what I would be looking for. I'm, as backed up by this test, really good at identifying people's voice. So most of the time I was able to tell if it was them or not. Actually, all of the time it was just coming down to their voice, I was able to tell if it was them. I beat China all the time on trade deals. And of course they're mad. They are very, very mad. I'm going to say 100% likelihood fabricated. When it was faces and words matched together, I got most of them correct. There was a few that slipped by me because I wasn't sure. The video was either low quality or I just, I honestly wasn't entirely sure. And what's cool about the MIT site is it's a slider so you can like tell them how confident you are or not. So some of those I wasn't fully confident on, but for the most part, I got them all correct. Just because they're both older men, they both have wrinkles, and you could tell a lot in the way the mouth moved, if it was a deep fake or not, because the wrinkles around the mouth and the light on the wrinkles just would seem off. 
And then a lot of the time, the eyes would almost seem pasted onto their faces when it was a deep fake. Again, just because when the mouth moved, the eyes didn't wrinkle correctly. So it was looking for those little minutiae in the face that you're used to seeing when you look at another human being talk. Sometimes they were painfully obvious and other times I, I would get them wrong. The ones I really got wrong were when there was no audio at all and I was just looking at the face. With audio, you can tell when the words don't line up with what's being said. Movement will be off, the face doesn't move. Where they're standing doesn't have the background sounds you would expect it to be. There was one where it was Trump standing in the field and the audio was so crisp that it was like, this can't be real. It's not lining up with what I would expect that area to sound like. But for the most part, I only got four wrong out of 32. So, I think I'm fairly good at spotting a deep fake. I have to uh, brush up a little bit, but I think I do, I think I'm better than most people. And today, we're going to actually test that. So I work for a news organization called Narcity Media, and I've decided to put my coworkers to the test to see if they can spot a deep fake. Because if they're working in the news, especially with online media, I would hope they could spot one. Okay, we're ready. Okay, number one. Look like a photo to me. I'm going to say fake. They all look real. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like naturally bad. And usually when you take pictures of people, they don't always look like they're perfect. The other one looks like it might've been done in studio. I don't know. <laughs> it just it just looks like a, a guy. Like, I feel like I've seen this man before. <laughs> so I don't know why someone would wear small rectangular glasses in 2022. I don't know why it creeps me out that the a computer tried to like create baby teeth. Where the bonnet hits the head, it, it looks manipulated to me. I can pick out what is fake and what is real for him. And I want to say that this is fake. This is 100% not real. The, the mouth is kind of just moving around. Hmm. One more time. Because I know there are, all, are a lot of Zelensky deep fakes. It's fun for them. Ooh, this, see, this is hard because I, I did the video on the Tom, fake Tom Cruise guy. This guy seems like an actor that is trying too hard. Say that I'm gonna guess that this is real. It, it couldn't be fake. I want to say it's a real person. His neckline and face are not, like they don't look uh, normal. They don't look natural. It looks like they cropped out his face and stuck it on a neck. So fake. And everything looks believable. So I'm gonna say real. Ooh. One more time. That looked, Oh, Donald Trump is a man who moves his face in a very distinctive manner. There's like a twist at the end that all of these are deep fakes. I'm... I want to say this one's fake. That is fake because of the eyes that are not really blinking. Seem to be looking off into some distant place, which kind of looks a bit vacant, which kind of makes me think it's fake. This man is so important that he has two microphones. Be real. Uh, it has to be real. Uh, real. Letterman? Leno? One of them. Not that that matters. I know that they did an interview together where they sat down the two of them, so that's not doctored. I think this is Trump. <laughs> the realest video that I have seen to date. So my test kind of got the results I was expecting. No one got perfect. Now the first half of my test was a trick question. Uh, all of them were fake. Everybody guessed that like some of them are real, some of them were fake. Number four especially, people really didn't like him. What really got people was the AI news anchor from South Korea, Kim Joo Ha. So she is based on a real anchor woman and they are just replicating her face and her voice. But it's a very uncanny replication of her to the point that you could replace any host. The one that really got people was the one of Gavin's former president, Ali Bongo. Ali Bongo's video just highlights that deep fake technology can inject a level of uncertainty into politics. This video though is probably the first time that deepfake technology has destabilized a country and that is where the issue lies. The speculation over this video of is it real, is it fake, is he sick, is he healthy led to enough uncertainty amongst Gavin that there was an attempted coup. It was a failed coup but 
this deep fake video still started a coup because the government released it and people didn't think it was real. And what this video represents is just the fact that the technology exists and can put that question into people's minds is dangerous. And then I saw this uncertainty happen with my colleagues when I was quizzing them. There was occasions where my colleagues would stop and say, I think this video is real, but it could potentially be fake. And a lot of them were on edge while doing this quiz just because they were looking for those deep fakes. It was primed in their mind that they were looking for a deep fake. Whether the video is real or not, the fact that deep fake technology exists was enough to put uncertainty into the minds of the military that all was not right with the government. And that was the catalyst that could start a coup. Deep fakes aren't going anywhere. And in fact, the technology behind them is just going to keep getting better and better. And people will continue to use them for insidious purposes. So as the technology evolves, we as informed internet citizens need to get better at spotting them. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. How good do you think you are at spotting them? If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you want more content about where your future is going, subscribe to Technality.